Welcome to section 1.6, part one, substitution method and exact solutions. In this part one video, we're gonna focus on the substitution methods. We will leave exact solutions and the other ending material for a subsequent video, um, which I'll call section 1.6, part two. So first we'd like to understand how to go through solving differential equations by way of substitution. This is very reminiscent of U substitution for integration, um, and we'll see how, it's, uh, how it is similar and different from that. So first, we're going to introduce you to kind of a general substitution method. We're going to suppose that we have a differential equation that is just generally of this form. So what I'm getting at is we have some kind of a function, whether it be a square root or a natural log or some other power um, with this linear term inside, ax plus by plus c. So that's what's important is we have this linear combination of x's and y's. And how we're going to solve this is we're going to transform it to a separable differential equation. The name of the game for section 1.6 substitution methods is taking a complex differential equation and rewriting it in a way so that it either is separable or linear. And we learned how to solve separable differential equations in section 1.4 and linear differential equations in 1.5. So for these types of DEs, we're going to make the substitution that V is gonna be that linear combination of X and Y. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve explicitly for Y as a function of X and V. Once we do that, we're gonna find dy dx using the chain rule. So if you're not as up to speed on your calc three, I have a reminder here of what the chain rule is. Now remember, we discussed that y was going to be a function of both x and v. So what we need to do is we need to run through each variable within y. So the first one we're going to look at is the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, and then what I'm doing is to get out of the partials, I'm multiplying by dx dx, all right, which we know is actually equal to one. And then the second variable was V. So the chain rule says add del Y del V. Then we need to multiply by DV DX. Again, using this Leibniz notation, the idea is to cancel out the DVs and here the DXs so that all of our final answer is in terms of um, DX. And so what you see here is we obtain this formula. We want to take the partial of i with respect to x, add it to the partial of y with respect to v. Don't forget this dv dx on the end. If you want to write that as a v prime, that works as well. All right, then what you want to do is you want to take this piece and you want to substitute it here for the left hand side. So we just did all of this work to solve for dy dx. Now we're gonna plug that in. Remember the right hand side is now f of v. And what results should be a separable equation. You should solve that separable equation via the methods that we discussed in section 1.4. And then in the end, you wanna make sure that you get your answer back in terms of X and Y rather than Vs. So you could actually maybe even add a step six here. Um, rewrite your final answer. In terms of X and Y. All right, so let's jump into an example here. It says use the above technique to solve the following problem. Number 16 from the textbook, find the general solution of the differential equation. Y prime equals the square root of X plus Y plus one. All right, so let's carefully run through these steps. Step one is to set up your substitution. V is just gonna be that inner linear combination, X plus Y plus one. And then step two is to solve explicitly for y. So y equals v minus x minus one. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through the chain rule to find dy dx. All right, so first I'm gonna take the partial of y with respect to x, and I'm gonna do this in a couple of steps. 
And then I wanna make sure my final answer is in terms of X. So I have my DX DX. Next, I wanna take the partial in terms of V of my inner function. And then I wanna multiply by DV DX. So let's go ahead and carry out these derivatives. This is a negative one times one and then plus one times dv dx. In other words, this is dv dx minus one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this expression and I'm gonna plug it in for y prime because remember this was dy dx after all. And then I also know that this inside expression is equal to v. So let's go ahead and rewrite the original DE in terms of V. I have DV DX minus one equals the square root of V. And recall what we said was this should now be a separable DE. So I'm gonna do one step here. I'm gonna move that one over to the other side. And now I can separate variables. So step five, solve the resulting separable DE. So if I move all the V's to the left, I get DV divided by square root of V plus one. And over on the right, I get DX. And from here, I can just sneak in some integral signs. Remember when you've separated variables, the idea here is that you can integrate both sides with respect to whichever variable you have, depending on your differential. All right, now the right hand side is straightforward. That's gonna be X plus C, so no worries there. But the left hand side, we're gonna have to do a U substitution. So let's go ahead and set that up. Let's let U be that denominator then that forces du to be a one over two square root of v dv. All right, or if you want, you can solve for dv. That gives you two square root of v du. So if you plug this all in to the left-hand side, I have two square root of v du over u. All right, so for the moment, this is bad because we have variables u's and v's being mixed together. And so what I'm gonna do is I am going to take a look at this numerator. I'm gonna say, all right, I have a square root of v here. I don't wanna have v's in this integral, but I can solve for the square root of v right here. So in red, I have the square root of v equals u minus one. So let's go ahead and make that substitution in the integral. That's going to become a 2u minus 2 over u du, which is further 2 minus 2 over u du. And so what we see here is a 2u minus 2 natural log of u. Now, technically speaking, I could put a constant of integration here. However, since I already included one on the right-hand side, I will omit it on the left-hand side integral because I could scoot one of those constants of integration over and combine them to a single constant. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace u with what I had substituted initially. And then don't forget what we had on the right-hand side, which is an X plus C. All right, so pulling it all together here, I have two times the square root of V plus one minus two natural log absolute value of square root of V plus one. And then this equals X plus C. And then finally, recall that V itself was a substitution. So going way back up here to the top, I wanna to write my final answer, which I kind of snuck in as a part six. 
write your final answer in terms of X and Y, not in terms of V. So here on the left-hand side, I have two times the square root of X plus Y plus one. And then outside of the square root, I have a plus one minus two natural log of that same square root, x plus y plus one, and then outside of the square root plus one, and all of this equals x plus c. Now this is an ugly enough function that I'm not even gonna attempt to solve for y explicitly. In fact, I don't even think it's possible. So it's fine for these problems to leave your answer implicitly. All right, so here is our answer for problem 16, solving um, as a general substitution here. All right, we have two more specific types of substitutions that have their own names. And so we're working our way towards solving homogeneous equations and then further Bernoulli equations. Let's take a look at homogeneous first. Um, I tend to think that they're a little bit easier. So we say that a homogeneous first order differential equation is of the form ax to the m y to the n dy dx equals bx to the p y to the q plus c x to the r y to the s. Now what's important here is taking a look at all of these exponents that I'm highlighting. Each of their sums should be equal. So I mean in each sum and or each term of the differential equation, when you add those exponents together, they should be equal. That is the quick and easy way to check if a DE is homogeneous. Once you have recognized that it's homogeneous, what it means is you can rewrite this DE so that it looks like a function in terms of the quotient Y over X. So once you've recognized that, that's where you know it's homogeneous. You're gonna make the substitution that V equals Y over X since that's that inner function. And then you're gonna solve that equation for y. So just by multiplying x to both sides, you will always have y equals v times x. So then let's run through the chain rule. This is the exact same chain rule that we saw up above in page one of the notes. And because this is always the same substitution every time, we can work it out. The partial of y with respect to x, the x would go to 1 and the v lives on. So you can see the v right here. And then dx, dx, of course, goes to 1. And then we have plus the partial of y with respect to v. The v goes to 1, the x lives on, and then times our dv dx. So we're always, always, always getting that same expression here, v plus x dv dx, to substitute in for dy dx. On a personal note, I don't have this memorized. I just rederive it every single time going through the chain rule. But if you want to memorize it, that works as well. So here again, we're going to take that expression in green. We're going to plug it in on the left-hand side of the de. We're going to rewrite the right-hand side in terms of v. And then again, solve that separable differential equation involving X and V. You can add in that sixth step here if you want, where you wanna rewrite your final answer in terms of X and Y. All right. So let's look at an example of this type. Um, problem two from the textbook, find the general solution of the differential equation. All right, so before we get started, let's check that this is homogeneous. I'm just going to indicate in here, even though we don't write it, there's an understood first exponent in each of these. So these two have the exponents one plus one. This one has the exponent two plus zero. And this term has the exponent 0 plus 2. So all of those are equal to 2, which implies that we're homogeneous.
All right, so now let me put it into the standard format here at the top of the page. If I solve for dy dx or y prime, however you want to write it, then what I'm getting here is a 1 half x over y plus a y over x. In other words, this is 1 half y over x to the negative 1, because it's just reciprocated, plus y over x. So we can see now how this is just a function in terms of y over x. So now let's go ahead and set up our substitution. v is going to equal y over x. If I solve for y, I get y equals vx. Let's run through the chain rule dy dx equals the partial of y with respect to x times dx dx plus the partial of y with respect to v times dv dx. All right, so if I run through this, again, I'm not even looking up top. I just run through the chain rule that I have memorized, and I just compute the derivative. So the partial of y with respect to x is v times 1 plus the partial of y with respect to v is x times dv dx. Now here again, if you want to write it as v prime, that works just as well. So either notation is fine with me. All right, so now I'm going to take this expression and I'm going to substitute it in here on the left. So v plus x dv dx equals, on the right-hand side, 1 half v to the negative 1 plus v. So what we see here is our v's are going to cancel. And I'm left with x dv dx equals 1 over 2v. So let's go ahead and separate variables. I'm going to move that 2v over to the other side, 2v dv. And then scooting all the x's to the right, I get a 1 over x dx. All right, so I'm going to integrate both sides. And I obtain v squared. Here again, I'm not going to write my plus c. I'll write it on the other side of the equation equals the natural log of x plus some constant of integration. Go ahead and do that sixth step of replacing v with whatever you substituted it for. So I circled it up above. I have y squared over x squared equals natural log of x plus c. And then um, You can either leave your answer implicitly like this, or if you wanted to solve explicitly, you could write this as y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared times natural log of x plus c. So this would be an explicit answer. All right. So there's our example of solving a homogeneous differential equation. We're going to end part one of the notes by looking at our final substitution method, which is solving Bernoulli equations. Um, but before we get to that, let's go ahead and just do a quick recap of general substitution methods. Um, actually, no, first, let's go ahead and define Bernoulli, and then we'll do a recap. So um, what is a Bernoulli equation? So what we see here is a first-order differential equation. Again, that just means that the highest derivative is a first derivative, so a y prime or dy dx, however you want to notate that. And so we have dy dx plus p of x y equals q of x y to the n. So this is called a Bernoulli. So let me just highlight here the key points. What we have is a first order derivative, a linear y term, and then some other nonlinear y term. 
This definition notes here that if n is zero or one, then this is just a linear differential equation. And we don't need to go through the other steps. We can just use our knowledge of section 1.5 and integrating factors to solve this. But if n is two or greater, we need to go through the approach of doing a Bernoulli setup. And so in that case, the substitution is always going to be v equals y to the one minus n. Here again, where n is that power on the um, y term on the other side of the uh, equal signs. Um, so next, what I have here is just a general setup. It's what we've been following for all of our substitutions, and we'll do the same thing here for Bernoulli. Step one is to determine your appropriate substitution. So if you have something of the form f of ax plus by plus c, then you're going to let that equal v. If it's homogeneous, then v is y over x. If it's Bernoulli, v equals y to the one minus n. So decide what substitution is necessary. Um, and then part b, if the differential equation is none of the above, use your judgment. So um, there are several problems in the homework set for this section um, that don't necessarily fall into either of these three categories. And I believe the very first problem is one of them, which was really mean of the book to put a rather difficult problem um, as problem number one. So if it doesn't look like any of these three, use your judgment try to decide what you think your substitution would be and give it a whirl if it doesn't end up getting you to either a separable or a linear differential equation then try something else all right step two is to solve for y as a function of x and v step three is to use the chain rule and so here again um, I will assume you have the chain rule memorized. This is something that we used um, quite a bit in Calc 3, um, so I'm assuming prior knowledge of that. Step four is to plug what you just found in step three for dy dx in your original differential equation, and then solve that new DE, which is either separable or linear in terms of x and v, and uh, solve it. And then again, here you can add a step six, make sure that your final answer is back in terms of X and Y rather than X and V. All right, so let's do an example of a Bernoulli equation. First of all, let's write this into standard form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this entire differential equation and I am gonna divide through by X squared to get my dy dx term by itself. So I have dy dx plus two over x y equals five over x squared y to the fourth. So you'll notice what I did here was I took these functions in terms of x and I wrote them essentially as coefficients in front of the y and the y to the fourth. Um, and here we can see that this is Bernoulli. We have a linear dy dx, a linear y term, and then this nonlinear y to the fourth term. So here I'm just going to note that this is Bernoulli with n equal 4. So in that case, we let v equal y to the 1 minus 4 or y to the negative three. And if I wanna solve for y, I wanna take both sides and I wanna raise it to the negative one third power. So what I have now is v, uh, y equals v to the negative one third. Now the nice thing about this is I really don't need to do the chain rule. I certainly can do the chain rule but half of it's going to drop out. So the chain rule is the partial of y with respect to x times dx dx plus the partial of y with respect to v times dv dx. So you'll notice here that this whole first term goes to zero because there are no x's. So the partial of y with respect to zero 
uh, but we do have the second term. So the parcel of y with respect to v is a negative one third v to the negative four thirds dv dx. All right, so um, we are now going to replace our dy dx with that expression, negative one third v to the negative four thirds dv dx. And then I'm going to rewrite this 2 over x term. But the y, I want to substitute with what I chose for my substitution. Um, so y is v to the negative 1 third. And this equals 5 over x squared y to the fourth, which is going to become a v to the negative 4 thirds. All right, now you can probably see why I dislike Bernoulli equations because they lead to these really ugly negative fractional exponents. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to choose to multiply by something convenient to make this uh, differential equation a little bit nicer. I am gonna choose to multiply through by a negative three V to the four thirds. And the reason why I chose that is because I would like to get dv dx by itself. So essentially, I just took the reciprocal of its coefficient. So once I multiply through by negative 3v to the 4 thirds, I obtain dv dx minus 6 over x v equals negative 15 over x squared. At this point, we now recognize this to be linear in v. We have a linear dv dx, we have a linear v, and so this guy right here is what we're going to use for our integrating factor. So our integrating factor rho of x is e to the negative 6 over x dx. So that becomes e to the negative 6 natural log x, which is e to the negative, whoops, excuse me, which is e to the natural log x to the negative 6 which is just x to the negative six when I cancel out the exponential and the logarithm. So now I'm gonna go back up to this differential equation that I just boxed in. I'm going to multiply through by my integrating factor, x to the negative six dv dx minus six x to the negative seventh v equals negative 15 x to the negative eighth. All right. And so um, as we learned in section 1.5, we recognize that the left-hand side is the derivative of a product. So it is the derivative with respect to x of x to the negative 6 times v. And here again, just do a check to make sure that this is indeed the derivative. You don't need to necessarily write it out, but even just run through it in your head. If I take the derivative of v, I get my dv dx and the um, x to the negative 6 stays. If I take the derivative of x to the negative 6, I get a negative 6 x to the negative 7th and the v stays. So sure enough, I am getting that derivative. And then, of course, we have our other side here, a negative 15x to the negative eighth. So using the fundamental theorem of calculus, I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. That fundamental theorem guarantees the cancellation. And so I have x to the negative 6v equals, just doing a general power rule here, um, I'm going to get 15 over 7 x to the negative 7th plus c. All right, so let me multiply by x to the 6th on both sides. v equals 15 over 7 x to the negative 1 plus c x to the 6th. 
And then finally, resubstituting for V, V was initially Y to the negative third. So I have Y to the negative third equals 15 sevenths X to the negative one plus C X to the sixth. And I think I'll just leave my answer uh, as an implicit solution here rather than solving explicitly for Y. So you can see how all three of these types of problems followed a very similar approach, identifying your substitution, solving for Y, um, finding dy dx uh, by way of the chain rule, and then finding the resulting either separable or linear differential equation, solving and then substituting back. So again, very similar to U substitution, um, except for our derivative is a little bit more complicated because we're working with a multivariable function. So the chain rule is needed. And then relying on our knowledge from sections 1, 4, and 1, 5 of how to solve both separable and linear differential equations. All right, so this is gonna conclude part one of section 1.6. And then in part two, we're gonna discuss um, a couple of different types of differential equations. One are exact equations and the other is gonna be second order DEs that are missing a particular variable. Um, so stop back on in for part two of this section.